I hope you're not one of those people that just memorize definitions without knowing exactly what they mean. So here in question four, the only question I would understand if you got it wrong is 4.5. That is the only question that I think was a bit difficult. Everything else is just basic stuff. So let's go ahead and look at 4.1. We're supposed to define the term impulse. Let me show you something. We know fully well that F net is equal to the change in momentum divided by the change in time. If we cross multiply, the change in momentum or the impulse is equal to F net multiplying by delta T. So what is the definition of impulse? If you look at this formula, the impulse should be the product of the net force and the time it acts on the object from the formula. That's the connection you need to make between definitions and formulas. That is 4.1. Let's go ahead and take a look at 4.2. Use the information on the graph to determine the magnitude of the impulse as the ball hits and bounces off the force sensor. Right, let's go through our equation statement and see what is going on. When a ball hits and bounces off a surface, it exerts a force on that surface. Grade 12 learners investigated how this force varies over time as the ball hits a force sensor and bounces off. A 50 gram soft ball was dropped from a height of 1.5 meters vertically above a force sensor connected to a laptop as shown on the diagram. And the graph we are given, we are given the force versus the time. The force is in Newton and the time it is in milliseconds. So as soon as you don't realize that the time is in milliseconds, you're probably going to get the question wrong. Let's use the information in the graph to determine the magnitude of the impulse. So the impulse is the force multiplied by the time. We have a shape, we have a triangle. So in order to find the impulse, we need to find the area of this triangle. How can you find the area of a triangle? That is half base multiplied by height. So this will be equal to a half base. Our base is the time in milliseconds. We go from zero to 15 milliseconds. So we're going to have 15 divided by 1000. Multiplying by 10 to the minus 3 is the same as dividing by 1000. Now we, are co we have converted our time from milliseconds to seconds. Multiply by our height. Our height is right here. We are given the value as 64.13. So we have 64.13. That is the impulse half base time side. If you put that in your calculator, you'll get 0 0.481 newtons multiplied by seconds. That is 4.2, calculating the impulse. 4.3, state the magnitude and the direction of the change in the momentum of the ball. The impulse is equal to the change in the momentum of the ball. So we already have our answer. We just need to quote it. Right, we need to state the magnitude and the direction. So the magnitude is 0 0.481 kg meters per second. Why am I using kg meters per second? Because when you are calculating the change in momentum, you use the mass and the velocity. So that's why I have kg meters per second. But when you calculate in impulse, you have newtons multiplied by second. That is the only difference. Right. So we have 0 0.481 as the magnitude. What about the direction? The ball is being dropped and it hit the force sensor. When it hits the force sensor, the force sensor will apply a force on the ball upwards. So the impulse will be upwards. So this is the direction we need to indicate here that uh, it is 0 0.481 upwards. So in 4.4, if the velocity of the ball just before it hits the force is 5.42, so VI is equal to 5.42 meters per second downwards. Calculate the velocity with which the ball will bounce off the sensor. So we're looking for VF. What is VF? That's what we're interested in. We need the mass of our soft ball. The mass is equal to 50 grams which we're going to divide by 1,000 to convert to kgs. And what else do we have? We have the impulse. We have the impulse. Delta P is equal to 0 0.481 upwards. So VI is downwards. 
we can substitute it with a negative sign because it is downwards. And then the impulse is upwards. So we're going to substitute it with a positive sign. That's if we take up as positive. You can take down as negative and you can take down as positive and do it the other way around. Anyway, stories. So F net multiplied by the time is equal to the change in momentum. So what is F net multiplied by the time? That is 0 0.481. This is equal to the change in momentum. The mass multiplied by VF minus VI. So we're going to have 0 0.481 being equal to 50 divided by 1000 multiplied by VF. VF is what we're interested in. Minus, minus 5.42. The first thing we should be doing here is dividing both sides by 50 divided by uh, 1000. If we do that, we're going to get 9.62 being equal to VF plus 5.42. Now we just need to take 5.42 to the left hand side. We're going to get VF being equal to 4.2 meters per second upwards. That is our final velocity. 4.5, the only question that was a bit tricky. Everything else is just uh, the basic stuff. So let's go ahead and take a look at 4.5. The ball is now replaced with the hard ball of the same size and mass. Will the force on the force sensor increase, decrease, or remain the same? The force is going to increase. Let me show you why. Uh, we know that F net is equal to the change in momentum divided by the change in time. If instead of using a softer ball, you use a harder ball, delta T is going to decrease. The time of contact is going to decrease. So if the time of contact decreases and the change in momentum stays the same, then it is easy to see that F net is going to increase. F net is inversely proportional to the time of contract. So the answer to 4.5 is increases.